to the one in me To the beggar man God cares He cares for you mm-hmm. He cares oh, He cares God cares Yes, He does up family what's up family merry christmas to you all and welcome to happy hour pastor jack and friends so continue to tune in share this file you know we independent media and we need your help so please share this file give us an awesome christmas present and share this to 25 friends i'm jerry who's live worldwide and we wish you all you and your family a happy merry christmas and don't forget coming up at 10 o'clock Next man up. That's right, we got some awesome guys here. So please enjoy this show. Pass the jack. Thank you, y'all. What up, man? Share this show because it's my birthday, man. My birthday tomorrow. Uh... <laughs> I'm turning, <laughs> I'm turning another age, you know, and uh, I, I used to <laughs> ask my sisters who are older than me, uh, let's just say, I used to ask my sisters, I used to say, um, every time the birthday would come around, how do you feel to be another year older? And uh, they say, same as I was yesterday. I said, um, I tell them, well, every time I get older, I get nervous. They say, why? I say, because I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to beat the guy that I was the last time. And that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know how old I'm turning this year, but however old I'm turning, I'm trying to do better than I did the last time. Yesterday I was out at um, going to uh, post office, 
And shout out to my big sister, Alicia, man. She always on point. So she, she sent me a Christmas uh, package about a month ago for the kids. And I've just been, you know. And so I went to the post office yesterday, and obviously the package has been returned. So, Lily, I'll come out there and see you. God bless you. Um, I love you. Um, but I get there, and I see a guy in there, and Chase and Coy are doing whatever it is that they do. And you guys heard them last Saturday, so you kind of know. They do, they, they do what they do. And um, I'm trying to keep them together. I'm at after work. I'm tired of I'm over it. And uh, I get outside. I get them back to the car. And I'm, I'm a little frustrated because the package isn't there. So, you know, I'm just trying to get things together. And they and this guy stops me as I'm getting him in the car and says, sir. And now, I'm, you know, I turn around because it's Baltimore and I don't feel like being bothered, but I entertain. So, I, you know, how you doing, man? And he... Uh, he says, hey, man, uh, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, we need more men doing this. And I'm thinking, what? Because to me, you know, it's my, na- it's my life. It's natural. This is what I do. But he, he points out, you know, being with the kids, right? And so I was in a conundrum, uh, uh, Dr. Proctor. I was in a conundrum because uh, outwardly, you look one way. But mm-hmm. on the inside, I've wrestled daily with being a good dad. And Sam will tell you, I, I, you know, wrestle with that thing. You know, it's hard being a parent. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not telling you something you don't know. I'm just, I'm telling you something I'm learning. <laughs> and so that thing, and then so I said to the man, I said, listen, bro, I thought being married was hard. I thought, you know, growing up was hard. Being a parent is the hardest thing I have ever done, and it seems to be seems to be harder because here's what I've learned as I come down off my morning uh, uh, talk. Here's what I learned: I learned that um, my children are raising me. You know, they are wow. smarter than I am. They are. They remember everything that I do not remember. And they keep me on my toes. And so they are my accountability partners. And the, and the, 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 the fight that we're having is I don't like being told what to do. First of all. And second of all, I certainly don't like being told what to do by a three year old and a four year old. So I am really (laughs) having a major problem here. (laughs) But. We thank and praise God for that gentleman. And I thank God for Chase and Coy who keep me together and teach me uh, what life is all about and to laugh at the, at the mistakes and to not take things so seriously. Um, and so that's what they teach me. But uh, you're live at the breakfast table with Pastor Jack. Good morning, guys. I got uh, Sam and uh, my girl, man. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> So how y'all doing? <laughs> Happy birthday to all y'all. So Happy early yeah. birthday. Thank you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, Brian? Not much, man. Um, so I don't wanna I don't wanna waste too much more time. I didn't rap I didn't rap for a minute. What I, it's a lot going on in the news, Sam. Uh and just, you know, tell us. Yeah, so uh this is a, a good a note. Um I'm so excited. A legendary opera singer, Leotine Price, um, at 90 years old, uh, they're doing a documentary on her in celebration of her 90th birthday, um, commemorating the opening of the 1966 opening of the Metropolitan Opera House at the Lincoln Center. Mm-hmm. That opening, the opening performance was uh, Anthony and Cleopatra, of course, starring uh, Leotine Price. And um, that was known um, that she was going to be the voice um, that would be the first thing to, um, uh, I guess, to, to christen, if you will, uh, the stage uh, there at the uh, new Met at the Lincoln Center. And so the uh, the architecture and the acoustics and everything of the building were designed specifically to accommodate her, and they talk about that in the documentary and everything. So. Um, I think it's a piece of history, you know, yeah. uh, just, just to know. Because I, I didn't know that. I've been to the Medicine Lincoln Center several times. And um, just to know that, you know, 
that a piece of her is kind of like always there with us is it's just great. You know? Yeah. <laughs> kind of like uh, a banner kind of level. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Black, black is back, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and that's the what you like me for. Um, Happy birthday, the- Madam C.J. Walker. Go ahead. Oh yeah! Happy birthday, uh, <laughs> Sarah Bree Low. Yeah, former formerly Sarah Bree Love, Madam C.J. Walker. Uh, happy birthday to her, a phen- phenomenal, dynamic businesswoman, great inspiration. That's um, it. Also, um, I don't know, man. No, I, no one likes our Secretary of Education. I don't know what's going oh, on. Oh, man. Shout out to the <laughs> University of Baltimore, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> graduated graduated <laughs> in 2017. <laughs> we have to, but we have, we have to just still give a shout out to Bethune Cookman for getting it started. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know what? No, real quick, Sam. Can, we, let's, can I just park here real quick for a second? Dr. Proctor. Yeah. Why would anybody that set at the helm of an academic institution knowing the credentials of this Secretary of Education invite her to speak at, in any fashion. I don't care if it's to the bathroom, uh, tell them to get out of the bathroom and go to class. That's not her job. You don't qualify for that. You can't tell me to go to class. But anyway, why would it, I mean, come on, what, what is the thought process? What do you say to yourself? Uh, well, <laughs> part of that is about uh, self-preservation, and sometimes things just really look good, um, but and, and uh, <laughs> that was in thought and theory, <laughs> but definitely not in practice. <laughs> so, you know, he thought that that was a great move. I guess he thought. I don't know who his advisors are. Um, maybe we need to check their credentials. Um, right. However, uh, clearly it was not a, a good move. It was not a good look. And, again, I have to applaud those uh, young um, men and women there for saying, hey, you know, I spent my money here, so what is borrowed money? At some point, I'm going to have to pay some of this back. And this is not why I came here for to sit, you know, for this type of foolishness. So, again, um, I thought that that was, you know, and this is so um, non-academic, but I thought that that was super dope and wish that I had done that. (laughs) I was like, why didn't we do that? (laughs) You know what I mean? I'm so mad because it's like I keep missing all the good moments. And and I've been telling people for years that I believe that I I was supposed to have been born during the era of of Dr. King in the 60s and during all those. That was supposed to be me. But God put me here, and I'm you know I got to do it. And, this, and I keep missing all the moments. So I, I'm, I don't want to have to create one because that's that that might be a bit uh, false. But I got to I got to get I got to get into one of these moments where we we protest authentically. Um, I was looking on. I'm, I'm following this. I'm sorry, Sam. We're gonna get right back. I'm following this uh, this thing on Twitter, uh, Instagram. I think you guys should follow. It's called More Information. It, it highlights uh, real black media, uh, anti mainstream media. Uh, more information. I follow that. It gives you all the the good stuff. They 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 posted something on here. We're gonna get to later um, in the show. But I wanted to put a plug in for more information. Go ahead, Sam. All right. So also, <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, the Trump administration has given to the CDC, uh, the Center for uh, Disease Control, a list of uh, forbidden words. Ah. <laughs> What am I? Public health agencies from using a list of seven words or phrases, including fetus and transgender. Prepare for next year's budget. Policy analysts of the Center for Control. In Atlanta, we're told the list of forbidden words at a meeting at, at a meeting Thursday with senior CDC officials who oversee the budget. According to an analyst who took part of the 90-minute briefing, the forbidden words are vulnerable, entitlement, diversity, uh, uh, transgender, fetus, evidence-based, and science-based. Oh, God. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not evidence-based. Not science-based. <laughs> it's forbidden. It's forbidden. 
Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. No, listen, listen, listen. Did you not just say that this is the Center for Disease Control? <laughs> yes. The Center for Disease Control. <laughs> Wait a minute. You need science. And prevention. <laughs> what? And you need evidence-based information. Evidence, <laughs> too. You need... Oh. They kind of go hand in hand, right? <laughs> oh. I mean, why don't you just shut down the academy? Everything is evidence-based. <laughs> oh, bro. Oh. What is oh. happening right now? What is happening? Wow. Wow, that is egregious. Let me oh. tell you. Let me tell you, you what. That is I'm as, that is asinine. That is asinine. Oh, and it doesn't scare me because God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. But when I look about, when I look at stuff like this, I can't okay. help but think about um, look back to uh, pre uh, World War II Germany when Hitler first uh, yeah. came to power. And then the Nazis uh, took over, and then they started to put in place the Nuremberg Laws. And just mm-hmm. bit after bit, mm-hmm. you know, stuff started to degrade as far <laughs> as, you know, things being based on science and evidence and everything that came out of his mouth was the authority. Wow. I mean, it was just... It's, this it's, is unbelievable. Yeah, it's just unsettling, I would say. And, that, and that's precisely the point he's trying to make here. He wants... All news must be real only if it comes from him. Right. And that's that, you know, authoritarian kind of understanding where the leadership knows best. Nah, bro, you have proven yourself. And and the, his ego is so, so, so bruised that and when it comes to his intelligence that at this point he wants to make everybody else feel like we're stupid and he has all all the knowledge. Let me tell you something, bro. That there kind of seals the deal. It it, it puts a whole lot of other things into proper perspective um, when it comes to, to Donald Trump. Um, I, I contend that we're going to see him for a little a, a little while longer. So uh, get used to some of this stuff, man. Get used to this, man. <laughs> He's going to be around for a while, y'all. I'm telling you. No, Jesus That's is bad. coming back very soon. <laughs> Look, I, I'm look. I, if I, if I this had is a telltale sign. <laughs> but it's like, bro, where you at? <laughs> come on, G. Thank you. <laughs> we have Thank you. Fun down here. We've been having a lot of fun down here, but the fun is up, G. <laughs> Thank next you. He gonna, he gonna, next, he's gonna give all of us a dress code. We're gonna be wearing <laughs> Trump ties or something. It's gonna be crazy out here. Um, anything else for us, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the GOP finally, finally, and I just say this finally because this is what they've been on. Ah, oh, they got go. their little tax bill passed. There we go. They got their little tax bill passed, so. There we go. We will <laughs> see. President uh, Trump signed it right before he left to go to mar a um, 1.5 million, excuse me, 1.5 trillion. trillion, trillion, excuse me, I apologize. Thank you. 1.5 trillion tax package. It is, um, I mean, just blatantly uh, favors the uh, wealthy. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, I mean, I just, I just, I don't, and it, and it's so crazy to me because you can't. I'm so interested to see how these midterm elections are going to go in 2018 because you can't the the poor and as President Trump referred to them, the poorly educated <laughs> and the low income voters who voted for him and put him in. He has shown through his actions, right, that he yep. really doesn't care about them. And I'm just wondering if maybe this tax bill going through may be a blessing in disguise. You know what I mean? Like maybe when they Mm -hmm. really start to feel his policies and start to really feel, you know, know, that he doesn't like them, I I hope that it will really start to wake some people Mm -hmm. up. This this is ridiculous. I, I I can't I can't fathom in my mind in my mind how one of 
Like, as, Ophelia, as Ophelia Ford would say, I can't fathom in my mind. <laughs> I can't. No, she wouldn't say fathom. Uh, Ophelia Ford would say quite eloquently, she would say, I can't phantom. Phantom in my mind. In my mind. <laughs> That's what she, how she would phrase phrase it. She can't phantom. And, 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 but, but it is one of those things that one, if they had to phantom, they would not be able to phantom. <laughs> Is it? It's unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know. You, I don't but, think you could phantom anything. I'm sorry. Go ahead, doctor. But Miss Mister Brown, I really think that you are giving him too much credit because uh, you're saying that he doesn't care, which means that you know he does have empathy or heart or something. You know, something towards mankind or humankind. And I really think that uh, that's too generous of a, a compliment for him because I really think that he is completely detached from. Uh, uh, real reality and, uh, uh, you know, the plight of the human condition because it hasn't been his story and it doesn't have to be. So, you know, it's, it's almost like we can't make him pay attention until, you know, those people who voted him in do what the, uh, you know, brave students at Bethune Cookman did, turn their backs on them. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it's just, again, it, you know, you're assuming like way too much because really he's an idiot. I mean, and you just cannot <laughs> expect a fool to do anything wisely. They just don't hang out. Right. Mm-hmm. A wise fool. You know, they just don't hang out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just not. They don't know. They don't know what to talk about. Yeah. They sure don't. They they don't. They don't know each other. They don't. They only speak the same language. <laughs> what we say? What we really say again? <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm I'm like you. He he's been given, and and not just from from this from this medium, but from several. He's been given a whole lot of um, attention. But what do you do? That is, and I tell people all the time. I don't care what you say. That's still your president. I don't care. I don't care what you say. Guess what? Guess what? When I uh, I was listening, it broke my heart. I, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. I'm telling y'all. I was listening to some. Uh, uh, my, I went to my son's um, little Christmas thing at his, at his uh, preschool program, and uh, the teacher was kind of stalling and killing some time, so they were going through some of their recitations and some of the things they go through in class. And she asked them a question. What's the name of the president? And, and naturally, I'm waiting for them to lift with resounding voice President Barack Obama. Because that's what I've been here. That's what I'm conditioned to hear. That's what I need people, young mm-hmm. black boys, to be saying out of their mouths. But unfortunately, my son said, as I looked him in his face, my son <laughs> said, my son. Lord, <laughs> good God. And you know, you, let me tell you something. That did something to me. Because my son at three is able to respond to a question about a man that he really doesn't know but must be able to say at some point, yeah, I'm a part of the Donald Trump legacy. <laughs> whatever it must be, whatever it shall be, my son, I'm, I will, I'm privileged enough to say that I lived in the Obama legacy. My son, he don't know nothing about no Obama legacy. <laughs> it's Donnie. You know what's so sobering about that, though? And... It's. I mean, it's because of the position that he has, the the president. You know, you, he, your son's aware of that. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm he, he's I'm the don't say it again. president is everywhere. I said the president is everywhere. Your son's aware of that. You know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. and it's kind of scary because it's like those kids that were exposed and grew up under President Obama, they you know have that example to look to. And it's like these kids now, it's like Donald Trump is their president. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> like, that's, that's kind of, like, bad. <laughs> they don't even know. Like, the children know. The children know the deal. Even the babies know the deal. They know, like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. They don't want to hug them. They don't want to be next to them. Even at the, at the, when he was handing out. Halloween candy, he making children cry. How do you do this? <laughs> How do you do this, man? You are old man. Old men not supposed to make children cry. <laughs> That's what? Mr. Jackson had that the- Halloween candy making the kids cry. He don't even have a mask on. <laughs> That's right. He don't have a mask on. 
Yo, that's when you know you're scary. Listen, <laughs> then we have a when the baby pick up on it. <laughs> Obama, ba- baby's rubbing and petting his head. <laughs> Man, you know what else I haven't noticed, to be honest, and maybe I just haven't been looking, but when Obama was elected, everywhere you turn, in every building, in every school, and every, every, I don't care what it was, it, in every store, you saw that picture. I don't care where you went, you saw a picture of that man. I don't see, mm-hmm. I don't see Trump at the post office. I don't see Trump. <laughs> like, I don't, I, I don't see him. <laughs> and I'm not mad that I don't see him, but maybe I, I have chosen not to see him, one, <laughs> or maybe he just is, isn't there. And I'm hoping that she's just not, he's just not there. Oh, Nobody wants there. that grimace. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just make you have a bad day looking at it. <laughs> a bad day. And that's probably why they say, can we just keep it in the back? Can we keep it in the break room? <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about on the outside door? Outside of the back door. <laughs> can we keep it up in the break room? Please, in the bathroom. You know, bathroom. You know, like, so that's that. But but we have fun uh, here. Um Right, right after this uh, song or two, uh, we'll have a, uh, a point of personal privilege with the professor. God bless you. See you. <laughs> You're listening to Buzzard Power 21, Christian Media on Late Night Radio. Love each other People walking hand 
like we want to be treated. We shall. We shall stand for something so we won't fall for just anything. Every man take a stand on us. Good morning. Welcome back. I'm always privileged to have Dr. Rochelle Proctor Walden, professor of Cla- at Claflin University, uh, with us uh, on the show. Uh, she's got a point of personal privilege that she's got to uh, lift up, and I can't wait to hear it. So, Dr. Walden? Yes. What you got for me? <laughs> what, what, listen, you, what do you need you, this morning? <laughs> I, heard, you know, I heard you had something about the Bill Cosby piece. Well, I do. Um, I think that it's very important, you know, that uh, we take, a, I guess, a very close look at, one, um, how some of the things that we may say when we're riding high will come back and bite you in the butt when you are swinging low. Man, so, man. <laughs> hey. so, you know, <laughs> that's one of the things. And I think that, um, you know, I think that it ties perfectly into what we were discussing uh, last week when, uh, you know, we were just talking about how sexual harassment is now <laughs> become a new thing, although it has never been a new thing. But going back to uh, just Dr. Cosby, I think that one of the things that <clears throat> of many that people find to be so uh, hypocritical about him is, one, how he talked about the youth, and two, you know, he understood and understands the power that he has as an image um, for the black community, regardless of the socioeconomic status. And I think that he just kind of went too far with that and uh, forgot really how black he really is. And it's funny because the world will remind you exactly where you stand <laughs> in times that are most inopportune for you. And it's, a, it's, it's sad but it, it was timely and it was needed um, because, again, you just can't go around, you know, distancing yourself from the people who pretty much made you or helped you become who you are. And you forgot about that. Yeah. Listen, isn't it, isn't it, isn't it, isn't it typical for people to, to do that, though, to kind of forget? You know, it, it's, or am I just saying that because I'm so used to hearing, oh, I forgot, I ain't know. Well, well, one, that's a, a great excuse, a great cop out. And I really wish that we yeah. would get away from that. But however, um, yeah. because what it says is, is that we don't want to be held accountable and that we just kind of want to be reckless with whatever it is right. that we do. And, you know, don't want anybody to come back and say anything about it or hold you accountable for the stuff you say you're going to do. Your word is everything. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when it goes back to, you know, Dr. Cosby, I just don't. <laughs> he is symptomatic of what money does to an individual because it makes you forget that there's an ethnicity (laughs) that is associated with your person Mm -hmm. that is not always green. (laughs) Mm -hmm. In fact, green is not an ethnicity. (laughs) Right, right. And, (laughs) And that you can't operate to think that, okay, my money is what is going to give me access to all of these conversations and privilege to say whatever it is that I want without any repercussion. And we see that with, with Bill Cosby. We also see it with um, OJ Simpson. And these yeah. are people who one, you cannot dismiss their talent. You cannot dismiss what they've done for the black experience. However, 
how did you forget that you were black? <laughs> How'd you forget um, that? Um, can I, this is, Sam, I think this is, is good where, where we are. Our t- briefing led me to want to <laughs> throw this at your feet, Dr. Proctor. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm a bit hesitant in saying this because for me, this is hot button. But for others, maybe not, maybe not so much. Have you been keeping up with what's going on with Dr. Umar Johnson? Okay, so with Umar Johnson, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson, I've met him several times, and I think that he's a very um, powerful brother. But is there something new? Because I know that there's been one thing that's kind of been ongoing. Well, well, most recently, most recently, he has been um, summoned to court, if you will. Uh, in order to uh, relinquish his credentials, um, in or uh, for <coughs> let me get to it. Here we go. All right, so he's um, and I'm just going to read to you what I've I've I have. I, he says here we have uh, Dr. Umar Johnson has been uh, unjustly ordered to stand trial and be stripped of his psychology credentials. Dr. Umar Johnson. Um, Uh, took to Facebook to share the sad news, and he says, and I quote, sometimes I ask myself, why did I start this campaign? I'm ready to return all of the donations and move to Africa. In an effort to give our boys a school they deserve, I had countless coons consistently harass white people in the power structure until they've decided to strip me of my credentials, arrest my fund, and audit me hundreds of phone calls to my degree-granting institutions, harassing them about my credentials, the same questions over and over again on every radio show, countless social network jokes and campaigns to, dis- to diminish the credibility of the one man black parents can count on to assist for the free saving of their children from the mental health and miseducation systems. This is the thanks I get for helping to save a generation of black boys. On top of all of the betrayals, I've had my own father join me join in on the fun. This Kwanzaa tour will be my farewell conscious community tour for a while. I'm taking a break from social network as well. I need to take care of me now. I will keep pushing for the school until my detractor successfully kills that campaign also. Whether we succeed or fail, just know that my intentions were honorable, and I tried my best. This is another victory for the mentally enslaved. Well, that conversation has kind of been going on for quite a while, just amongst, you know, other uh, academics, um, because, uh, you know, even um, I've had conversations at Claflin University with a couple of my colleagues in the uh, African-American studies department about how some of them have been suspicious of his credentials and that uh, it was most difficult to find his dissertation. So, you know, that's, that's kind of not new news as, as far as, you know, my circle is concerned. Uh, however, uh, again, you have someone who is outspoken who it has, for the most part, you know, walked his talk and um, just... <laughs> Somebody was like, oh, no, he's got to sit down. I mean, it's reminiscent of COINTELPRO with any black nationalist group. Um, He's definitely, you know, in the same, um, I guess, category with Marcus Garvey, who also tried to do well for black people. And he's probably one of the most prolific political minds of the 19th century. And, um, you know, it's just it's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate trying to live out loud in public. And those are just kind of the brands that go along with that. And, you know, I support the brother because his uh, intentions definitely were honorable. Um, However, you know, I don't know who's on his team. I don't know who's advising him. And, um, you know, I don't know um, who's praying for him outside of myself. If his credentials were, in fact, um, solidified or, or he had them securely, why would anybody have to question it, and and why would anybody? Uh, why would it be hard to find? Now, what I'd like to point here is if the and 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 as we saw here, 
the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of State before the State Board of Psychology has taken this case. Uh, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Bureau of Professional and Occupational Affairs versus Uma Johnson responded, um, and it, that, that's the court. I mean, I guess that's the case against him. And so, mm-hmm. if he did not have this degree, they would have they they would not even have to, you know, remove a credential from him that he did not have. You know, that that's my I guess, in my opinion. Well, the, okay. So let me let me um, you know kind of further that point. <clears throat> So, you know, um, most people are not very clear on whether he went to a professional school, which you would still have to do some sort of research, or if he went to a research-based, you know, institution where, you know, does he, um, is it a PhD, is it an EDD, you know, what, 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 kind, of, what kind of degree is it? Mm, Hello? Okay. Oh, so, I mean- you know, and, you know, a lot of things happen behind closed doors. Uh, as far as um, people not necessarily defending research, um, okay. you know, sometimes people can just garner signatures um, just because of who you are or, you know, what's going on. So there's a lot of um, truth telling needs to go on <laughs> within the academy, which is ironic oh, well. because it's supposed to be about the truth. So when you can't find certain things and certain, you know, paperwork, then people question the validity of your degree whether it was granted, whether you commenced or what have you. So, you know, um, and even if I can harken back to Livingstone, you know yourself that there are some people that are still that one credit hour short, but they've graduated, got the picture, uh, got the sleeve. Um, (laughs) There's probably clothes sitting on top of the uh, fireplace or across the Bible, and they have not graduated. (laughs) Ain't that something? (laughs) <laughs> so, I mean, we, we know that things like this can happen. It just doesn't happen at the undergraduate level. So, you know, I just think that um, anytime somebody, uh, especially somebody uh, who is black or African-American or identifies with the black experience becomes too powerful and you're able to galvanize people, then somebody has to take you down. Mm-hmm. Because he's getting, he was growing, you know, getting too much power. Because people listen to Omar. He is a powerful speaker. Yeah, he's a good boy. Yeah, he is. He is. Um, I, you, know, <laughs> pray for, you have to pray for him. And I mean, there's no other way to 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 say it. I mean, he's going. He's going to take some hits, but you you got we got to pray for him um, and leave it at that. Um, but I like to. I want to read one of these stories that I like a lot. Um, and then, and then I'll bid you guys a, a farewell. Uh, don't forget to share the po- uh, the podcast, share the show, uh, Positive Power, Double uh, XI uh, Radio, um, uh, Jerry Royce Live, uh, Happy Hour with Pastor Jack. You can find us all on Facebook and all across uh, SoundCloud and iTunes and Spreaker Radio and wherever they, we we pull up, we're out there. And so find us Instagram, uh, find us. Um, but Dr. Tony Capolo says that when he was a boy growing up in a congested and bustling city, his mother arranged for a teenage girl who vi- lived nearby to walk home with him at the end of the day. For this, she was paid a nickel a day. But Tony rebelled in the second grade and told his mother, I'll walk myself to school. And if you give me a nickel a week, I will we'll be extra careful. You can keep your other 20 cents and we'll be better off, he says. After a period of pleading and begging, little Tony finally got his way. For the next two years, he walked himself back and forth to school. It was an eight-block walk with many streets to cross, but he was careful and didn't talk to strangers or get distracted along the way. Years later, at a family party, he bragged about his independence and reminded his family of how he had taken care of himself as a boy. His mother laughed and added to the rest of the story. Did you really think you were alone, she said. Every morning when you left for school, I left with you. I walked behind you all the way. And when you got out of school at 3.30 in the afternoon, I was there too. I always kept myself hidden, but I was there and I followed you all the way home. I just wanted to be there for you in case you needed me. Sometimes God might not seem like he's there because you can't see him walking behind you. But do know that wherever you find yourself this Christmas season or as you look forward to 2018, wherever you are, do know 
that God is always there when you need him, just in case. God bless you. You've been on with The Breakfast Table and Pastor Jack. Take care. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. You're listening to Positive Power 21, Christian Media on Late Night Radio. All right, family. Wow. What a great show. We hope you had an opportunity to share this show. Don't forget, every, every Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, you got my good friend Pastor Jack and friends. So come on back, y'all. Come on back and share this file. Get your, your Saturday mornings on. This will get you out of bed. All right? All right, so uh, I want you guys to have a happy, happy Merry Christmas. Be safe and joyful, and we hope you enjoy your family and friends. Take care, and God bless you, and we love you right here at Positive Power Double XI, celebrating four years in podcasting. And congratulations to Superwoman Tina Hobson from I Am a Superwoman Radio. She be celebrating four years in radio on the 27th of December. Congratulations, and we love you. I'm Jerry Woods Live Worldwide on Positive Power Double XI. Coming up next, next man up. Stay tuned. Peace. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast.